Okay. Uh, welcome. Um, I'm uh, Matteo Marsili. I come from ICTP. And, um, and my plan is uh, to tell you something about uh, game theory. And um, so uh, I have two lectures, one uh, uh, today, one on Friday. So the plan was to just start with game theory today, then to talk about uh, and the basic of uh, modeling uh, strategic interaction, and then uh, maybe to, to go to evolutionary games and more uh, advanced things on Friday. And when you will have seen already uh, mathematical models describing uh, population dynamics and these kind of things. So uh, many of these things uh, are very basic. So probably many of you have already heard about game theory one way or another. And um, so uh, for this reason, I think it's very important uh, uh, that you uh, interact, I mean, to say, um, that you give me some feedback about what, uh, what you know, what you don't know, and uh, ask questions, okay? So, uh, <clears throat> essentially, game theory has to do with uh, interac interaction about, uh, uh, interaction among uh, um, agents, uh, autonomous agents, and, uh, and pretty much uh, you can say that any interaction about uh, individuals or say different um, uh, autonomous agents is a game. So, for example, uh, uh, you could say uh, that uh, Romeo and Juliet played a game uh, in this uh, Shakespeare play. And uh, you can say that, uh, I don't know, uh, Hitler and Stalin played a game. And uh, you could say that we play a game when we go and vote. You could say that uh, um, firms play a game when uh, they decide how much, uh, how to set prices and kind of things. So all of these are, uh, uh, say, interactions where uh, 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 and, and what we want to do is to explain uh, behavior and to uh, have a way of explaining behavior. Of course, um, uh, we have to make assumptions and uh, game theory does not cover all the situation I told you, uh, but it essentially uh, covers the situation where uh, the agents behave in a rational manner in a way that uh, is uh, uh, um, optimizing uh, some incentives, okay? Some individual incentives, okay? So probably you can say that Romeo and Juliet uh, were not really optimizing, uh, 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 I mean, they were just following patients and also, and, uh, <clears throat> and also you can think uh, uh, when we, go and vote, uh, we, we are not really uh, fulfilling uh, any um, objective or uh, really, because in the end, uh, you can say that after all, your vote uh, will not, uh, I mean, it's just one out of many, and so it will uh, not change the elections. So whether you go or not, probably things are not going to change. Um, but fortunately, we go there because we believe, I mean, those who go voting go there because uh, um, of other reasons, because we are passionate about politics, maybe. And, uh, and, and this um, means that so, uh, thanks, to this, uh, thanks to the fact that we do not act uh, just uh, strategically, then... Um, um, Democracy can, 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 can work, okay? So, um, if uh, we assume that people uh, optimize behavior, uh, then uh, uh, it is possible to make a prediction of how they, believe, uh, how they behave. And this is uh, what uh, game theory 
is, uh, is about. Now, there is one way in which uh, game theory has been uh, um, say developed, largely it has been developed as a, a, a theory of uh, strategic thinking. That is to say, uh, you think about uh, uh, what is the context you are in, uh, you are, you, uh, you are in uh, who are the players with whom, with whom you are playing, and then uh, you assume that uh, um, these people are also playing rationally, and say so you try to figure out, to deduce uh, how they're going to behave, uh, depending on how you behave, uh, and then uh, you optimize on that. So, so it's it's a forward-looking uh, perspective, okay? Um, it's a forward-looking perspective where essentially uh, the key things are um, your uh, strategies, your expectations, and uh, your expectation on other people' behavior, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, okay. Now. Uh, this is one way of thinking about game theory, but it's not the only way of thinking. Uh, I mean, in the end, uh, what you uh, want to explain is uh, uh, why do you see uh, what you see in a strategic context? So why do you see people uh, or agents behaving in a certain uh, manner? And so, uh, to some extent, it doesn't really matter how do they got there, whether they got there by this uh, deductive behavior, by this uh, 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 process of induction, or whether they uh, got there just uh, because uh, um, for other reasons. Uh, and uh, the reason that you observe that particular state uh, is because uh, uh, any deviation from that behavior would be harmful, okay? And uh, this is actually uh, a very general uh, uh, view. I mean, say, just to think about game theory as a prediction of uh, um, sort of arrangements uh, uh, of states uh, which are consistent uh, with the incentives or with, with the and, uh, and this is actually uh, the type of uh, um, understanding of game theory, which is also very useful in, in biology or in, in evolution. So we see, we think that uh, uh, maybe uh, organisms are playing a game, or we think that genes are playing a game. And uh, the kind of, uh, we want to think about uh, the abundances or that we see in experiments or the type of um, um, strategies, evolutionary strategies that we see out there as being uh, an equilibrium, uh, a, a situation where any mutation out of that state would produce uh, uh, offsprings uh, with a lower fitness or with a lower, which are less um, uh, optimal, okay? So, uh, I think it's good to keep this in mind, that you have these two uh, different uh, um, ways of thinking uh, uh, about uh, 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 games, uh, I got strategic interactions, uh, uh, one which is uh, forward-looking uh, uh, and one which is essentially backward-looking. I mean, so, is to say, you observe a particular state uh, uh, because uh, you arrive there uh, and uh, just because uh, any deviation out of that uh, is, uh, uh, is, is harmful. Uh, but then uh, um, whether you think in one way or another does not matter. So I'm going to follow uh, the economic way of thinking, which is also how uh, things have been developed in, in game theory. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, so the next thing is uh, how do we uh, formalize uh, this uh, this game? Okay, so in the end, uh, what we have uh, uh, the elements that we have are uh, players. Say, let's say n players.
And uh, uh, each of these players, each of these players uh, um, is a um, um, rational agent. And so uh, uh, each of these guys has a, um, a choice problem that he faces. Okay? He has to decide. Uh, he has to decide <coughs> about a certain number of uh, alternatives. And we call these alternatives uh, the strategies, okay? Alternatives. Strategies. Strategies, uh, as we will see, are uh, just, uh, in simple cases, are just actions. But the more complex cases are uh, uh, plans of actions. So, for example, uh, uh, if you um, if we think about chess, then uh, <coughs> a strategy is a sequence of moves. Not only that, uh, actually, it's a contingent plans. Uh, that uh, entails a sequence of moves uh, contingent on whatever the adversary does. Okay? So it's a plan of actions. Okay? It, as in strategies can be uh, a plan of action in, 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 in general. Okay? So it's something that uh, essentially specifies your behavior. Okay? Fully specifies your behavior. Then uh, you have uh, uh, preferences. Uh, Now, um, say the way in which you can think about preferences is uh, um, there is an objective way in which you can think about preferences, which is just uh, um, uh, observed behavior. So we observe that individuals in certain uh, uh, situation, uh, uh, when confronted uh, with simple choices, uh, choose A versus B. Okay. And so we formalize this thing by saying that uh, 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 A is preferred to B, or actually we formalize it by attaching numbers to choices, and this is the utility function, okay? So there is a way of formalizing preferences in terms of uh, uh, utilities. Now, um, you should think about uh, utility or payoffs or uh, payoffs as really uh, <coughs> a mathematical. Uh, uh, you should not think about this as just money, about, say, um, well, of course, you can think about uh, utilities as money and. Uh, and you can think that all of this is just uh, uh, modeling a selfish behavior of uh, 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 people. But actually, that's not the point. I mean, the most general way of thinking about this is that we want to formalize uh, uh, the settings in which uh, uh, different agents interact one with the other. And we want to, um, and of course, we think uh, uh, agents are taking rational choices and that Preferences are what are behind these rational choices, so we formalize these uh, in terms of utilities. So I'm saying this because sometimes uh, um, the uh, say the um, game theory raises a number of discomfort, especially with, when we are uh, confronted with. Uh, 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 situations like uh, prisoner's dilemma uh, and failure of coordination and, uh, and, and so well, you would think that uh, you tend to get, uh, say, uh, uh, passionate about people being selfish and then uh, social optimum not being uh, realized. But actually, we just want to describe what is, uh, uh, what is happening in a particular context and we want a theory that can be predictive. Okay? Okay, um, then, uh, and then uh, essentially you have, uh, um, uh, generally you have to specify 
a particular setting. So how is this interaction going to take place? So the simplest setting is just a, a single stage games where people just meet and they play their game, okay? And uh, this is what we are going to uh, concentrate uh, mostly. So single stage games. And um, well, essentially, um, player one meets with player two. Player one has a certain number of uh, possible actions or strategies. Player two has a certain number of... Each of these corresponds to a certain utility. And then uh, <coughs> they just take their decision. Okay. And, um, but actually, you can think uh, actually at a dynamical setting. Dynamic settings uh, where uh, um, essentially there is a sequence of moves uh, that is taken by the different players with a certain order. And then uh, some of these um, uh, sequence of moves uh, end up into final outcome where people are given, uh, when the players are given the, uh, the payoffs and, and things like this. So, and uh, this can go on forever or, uh, or not. Uh, particular cases of dynamic settings, uh, which are called uh, repeated games. Well, essentially, you play the same game every day with, uh, um, with a particular uh, other agent and uh and in this case again uh, why is this important because essentially you should always think uh, that your uh, uh, strategy in this game uh, this case becomes uh, a plan of action on how you are going to behave depending on how the other guy is going uh, is behaving or how the other players are behaving okay, okay? And then uh, uh, there is uh, uh, another thing uh, which uh, is also quite important to specify if you want to um, discuss about uh, games, is what do agents know? It's information. And... Um, Not only uh, what uh, do people know, but what do they know that other people know? And what do they know that other people know that they know? And uh, so, and essentially, uh, <coughs> what are the things that uh, people know and what are the things that are common knowledge? Common knowledge uh, So, uh, common knowledge is a very important uh, element you have to take into account, which are those things that uh, are known by everybody and that everybody knows that everybody knows. Okay? And everybody knows that everybody knows that everybody knows, etc. Et okay? Okay, so for example, <clears throat> for sure, you assume that... Uh, uh, each player knows uh, his own payoff and his own strategies, okay? And um, we also assume that uh, uh, each player uh, knows uh, the strategy, knows the, who are the other players they are interacting with and what are the strategies of the other players, okay? This is what is generally agreed. Now, there are situations uh, where uh, uh, you think of games of um, complete information where uh, agents know 
also the payoff of other agents. You don't, not only know uh, how much you are going to get, but you also know how much the other uh, players are getting depending on uh, what other people play, okay? So, and there are situations of incomplete information where essentially you don't know uh, the payoff of other people. So, to make an example, uh, so um, uh, I interact with uh, Luca and then uh, we go and get a coffee and uh, and I don't know whether uh, he's the kind of uh, greedy guy or kind of generous guy that uh, will pay the coffee or will decide to offer a coffee or not. Okay, so I don't know if he takes pleasure in offering coffee to me or uh, if instead uh, um, uh, that's not the case. And so, so I may decide uh, to offer coffee to him or not, I mean, uh, uh, depending on, um, on this. Okay, so, um, and then uh, uh, there is uh, uh, perfect information. Games of uh, perfect information where essentially, uh, if you have, this applies to dynamic settings where uh, essentially you know everything uh, uh, that has, go has been going on in the past uh, in the interaction, okay? So, um, there are instead uh, in, uh, games of uh, imperfect information. Uh, where, when uh, essentially you, there are uh, parts of uh, the, uh, uh, parts of the game where you essentially do not observe uh, uh, what, for example, uh, another uh, um, player has been doing, okay? And, uh, and so, <clears throat> um, okay, so, uh, so then, uh, uh, so this is more or less uh, the uh, a rough, uh, classification of uh, game theory and uh, um, and so uh, another uh, um, uh, say uh, term which uh, people use to encode information is uh, beliefs so essentially <clears throat> If you uh, play a, a game where there is a um, sort of random element, then you also uh, should encode uh, uh, the ifs of the different the, the probability distribution of, over this random element that agents have. Okay, and these are called uh, beliefs. Okay, so. Um, Questions? Yes, please. Okay. So complete information uh, refers to the fact that you know the payoffs of uh, every other guy, okay? Uh, eh? Well, the payoffs are given, uh, uh, so okay, so let me uh, just uh, make an example, okay? So this is the prisoner's dilemma. Okay, so imagine that uh, we are in a situation where uh, uh, there are two players. Okay, and uh, the situation is the following. So that, uh, uh, so <clears throat> there is one way of uh, representing uh, games, uh, which is called, uh, 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 extensive uh, form, which is essentially like a decision tree, okay? 
So you start uh, and you say, um, there is player one who takes, there are two players, uh, player one uh, who takes uh, uh, an action. Then uh, uh, one is to uh, say action C, and the other one is action uh, D, and we'll uh, uh, say what this is. And, uh, the, and then uh, there is player two that is taking uh, uh, a decision at this point. One is action uh, C that uh, is giving uh, uh, outcome, uh, say, uh, minus one, minus one. One is action uh, D, oh, sorry, uh, D, uh, that uh, is giving uh, um, outcomes. Uh, um, so here I'm uh, representing uh, here the payoff for one and here the payoff for two, okay? So this means that uh, if agents, uh, uh, if player one chooses C and player two chooses C, then uh, player one gets minus one and player uh, two gets uh, uh, minus one, okay? Instead, uh, here, if player one get, uh, decides C and player two decides uh, D, then uh, uh, player one gets minus 10 and player two gets zero. And then uh, equally uh, here, you could have that uh, player two and decide for C or for D. And in this case, uh, uh, player one gets zero and player two gets minus 10. Then player, in this case, they both get minus nine. Okay. So, um, then uh, essentially, uh, you can say that uh, this is a game of uh, complete information in the sense that uh, when a player two has to make a choice, he knows what player one has done, okay? You know whether uh, player one has decided to do C or decided to do D, okay? There is another uh, way uh, in which uh, uh, essentially you say that uh, uh, this is not true, that when player two makes his choice, he doesn't know whether player one has chosen C or D, okay? And then uh, uh, in uh, game theory, you represent this uh, as a, 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 a circling, uh, so, so, so to say that uh, uh, the, you have an information set that contains these two nodes and you cannot distinguish between them, okay? So this is incomplete information, okay? Was there another question? Uh, for, between complete and uh, perfect. Uh, so imperfect, uh, uh, <clears throat> okay, no, so, so, so this is, sorry, uh, this is imperfect information, okay? Imperfect information. So instead, uh, uh, incomplete information is when uh, player one does not know uh, the payoff of player two. Okay? It, it does, so player one has to uh, behave uh, with um, um, not knowing uh, exactly what are the payoff of player of player two, he has just a belief on uh, what these payoffs are. And the way in which you can uh, uh, represent this is by saying that player one does not really know with whom uh, he is playing, he or she is playing. Okay, so this is. Uh, incomplete information, okay? So, uh, one example of this is, uh, say, uh, we are uh, uh, sharing a cake, okay? So there's a cake, and the game, and, uh, and, and this cake has a cherry in the middle, and the game is that uh, I split the cake and you choose which part. So I may think, uh, well, uh, me here likes cherries. So what I will do then uh, is to take uh, uh, the part uh, with the cherry a little bit smaller and then let, let you choose, okay? And depending on how much I believe you, uh, you like the cherry 
I will uh, uh, change this, okay? So this is essentially, so if I, if I uh, don't know how much uh, uh, you like uh, this cherry, then, uh, uh, um, so if I knew exactly how much you like the cherry, then I would know exactly how to split this cake. If I don't know, uh, then, and this, yes, it's, uh, okay. Okay, so uh, this is uh, a preserved dilemma in extensive form. Uh, there is another uh, uh, <coughs> another way of uh, saying, uh, looking at the same uh, uh, game, which is in uh, uh, normal form. Normal form, uh, if you assume that uh, player two does not know what player one uh, did, um, then... Uh, Essentially, it's like if player one and player two were acting uh, simultaneously. Okay, they have to take choices uh, simultaneously. Okay, then uh, what uh, matters is just uh, a um, a payoff matrix where you have uh, the two possible choices. This is uh, say uh, player one, and this is player two. And uh, for each of these choices, uh, you put uh, the payoffs of player one and of player two. So this is the payoff for player one and this is the payoff. Uh, this is the payoff for player two. This is the payoff for player one. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, sorry. Okay, and so this is the way which you can uh, represent uh, um, this game in a uh, uh, normal form, okay? So, um, so this is the choice of agent one, and this is the choice of uh, player two, okay? Now, um, okay, so let me, uh, so you know the story uh, behind this, uh, this game. So the story behind this game is that uh, there are two uh, persons who are caught because they are uh, uh, by the police and supposedly they committed a crime and they have uh, these uh, two options other to uh, uh, they are say separated and then the police talk to each one uh, separately so uh, if uh, one confesses, then uh, and um, they, 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 they are asked to confess to uh, this crime and to essentially accuse the, the, the other guy. And uh, if um, um, they do not, uh, both of them uh, say cooperate between each other and they do not confess, each one uh, goes in prison for one year. If instead uh, uh, player one uh, confesses, uh, so uh, does not confess, but player two confesses, then player two gets out of prison, and player one uh, goes in prison for, uh, is the only, uh, say, uh, guilty person, so he gets to prison for uh, 10 years. <laughs> And the converse happens if uh, uh, player one confesses, um, so uh, confesses and player two does not. And uh, if they both confess, however, they go to prison for uh, uh, nine years. Okay. Um, okay, so, uh, so in general, uh, so formally, how would you uh, represent uh, a game? Okay, now uh, I'll get a little bit uh, mathematical. So uh, agents, uh, do you have uh, uh, yes? Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. So, 
D equal confess uh, C not confess. Essentially, the, the idea is that C stands for a cooperator with the other uh, poor guys, that, that's be, and uh, D stands for a defect, defect. Okay, so not to cooperate with the, with, with the other guy. Okay, okay so formally uh, we have these uh, players that we are going to uh, label with I, and uh, I use a small n. And uh, then uh, <coughs> there are uh, strategies uh, are, uh, say, there is a set uh, of strategies uh, for uh, each peer. Of uh, I. And uh, SI, this is more or less uh, belonging to big S, is a strategy. And then uh, uh, <clears throat> there is there are payoffs and uh, payoffs uh, are going to be uh, functions of uh, strategies played by uh, essentially going to be a strategy is how much uh, uh, agent I gets uh, if player one plays S1, player two plays S2 etc. player n plays s n okay and uh, and so so since uh, um, what is really important uh, for what agent i can decide i mean the the variable which is important here is s i because this is the one that agent i controls okay then one writes this uh, as a utility function as a function that depends on s i and uh, on uh, uh, S minus I. So this uh, notation, S minus I, stands for all the strategies S, J, J different than I. Okay, so it's a vector of all the strategies of the other players. Okay? It's a notation that specifies the strategies of all the other players. Okay? So this say uh, your payoff depends on what you play and what you uh, do not play. Okay, so for example, in the prisoner's dilemma, you have that uh, uh, this. Uh, so so uh, uh, in the prisoner's dilemma, you have that S i is just uh, uh, the set of uh, two choices, C and D. Okay. And um, and essentially, uh, say uh, these uh, these numbers here give you u one. These four numbers gives you u one. These four numbers gives you u two, uh, depending on uh, the uh, choice of the the guy and the choice of the other guy. Okay. Okay. Uh, so. <clears throat> So essentially, the main uh, point uh, here is to, uh, the, the key question is to understand uh, what will happen, okay? Uh, can, you, can we predict uh, how these two guys will behave? And essentially, there are, uh, um, so this is what uh, game theory is about. So uh, in setting like uh, this one, um, there is a simple way uh, to behave, which is essentially to find out uh, that there are strategies uh, which are dominant. Okay? So, uh, if you look at this situation, uh, say, um, if uh, uh, Agent 1 has chosen to, do, to cooperate, uh, then Agent 2 has to choose between uh, this uh, and this. Okay? Here it gets uh, minus 1, here it gets 0, so this is what he will choose, okay? And if uh, player, uh, uh, player one has, choose, has, has chosen to defect, then if he copy, it gets minus 10. If he defect, it gets minus 9. So 
he should defect even if the other guy has uh, chosen to defect. So defect D is uh, the best strategy no matter what the other guy does. So we say that uh, uh, C, uh, D, so the C is dominated by D, or that uh, D is a dominant strategy. And so uh, <clears throat> in this case, uh, well, then, then what you find out is the same is true for one. Indeed, uh, essentially, uh, the best choice for one, so in this case, if, he, if one knows that uh, uh, agent two is, is choosing D, D anyhow, then uh, his choice is between minus 10 uh, if he decides to cooperate, or minus 9 if he decides to uh, defect. Uh, so then uh, he will decide also to defect. Because essentially D is also a dominant strategy for him. Okay. So in the end, uh, the prediction of uh, uh, game theory is that uh, both these two guys will uh, defect. Okay. You see this also in... Uh, in this representation, because uh, what you see is that, uh, say, for uh, agent uh, one, no matter what, whether uh, 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 two is choosing this column or this column, the minus one is always uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, sorry. Uh, at this point, I realize. So, if two chooses to uh, Yes, so sorry. So if two chooses to cooperate, we are on this column, then uh, uh, one should defect. Okay, so this is better than this. But uh, if uh, two choose to defect, then this is better than this. Okay, so this strategy cooperate, uh, you can eliminate this strategy because it's always uh, um, dominated by this. Okay, and you can do the same uh, with uh, player two. So that in the end, uh, this is uh, uh, this is the only possible behavior which is consistent uh, with uh, the payoffs of agent. Yes. You defined a particular case of the decision tree. Can you use the mic uh, because it's not uh, working? Okay. Uh, as you defined the decision from the decision tree at their how to we can have the knowledge of perfect or imperfect knowledge but when we defined a normal form of game the decision making was instantaneous as you told yes so um, can i safely say that in the normal form game the knowledge is imperfect always yes so uh yes so so the that when uh, two chooses uh, uh, you um uh when two chooses it doesn't know what one has chosen okay so in the particular case of the uh, prisoner's dilemma, this is the case because say, maybe these two guys are uh, interviewed in two different rooms, uh, one before the other, but say, the second does, does not know what the, the one uh, has uh, done. And as a matter of fact, in the end, uh, it doesn't matter. Okay. Because we see that anyhow, they end up defecting uh, uh, anyhow. Yeah. Well, in this case, there is no probability, no? So the prediction is, uh, is this one, uh, any, anyhow. Okay, so probably you are dissatisfied with this result because you say, hey, but look, I mean, uh, if these guys had cooperated, uh, they would have been both better off, okay? And this is actually, uh, I mean, I, well, this game is uh, causing this type of uh, discomfort. And actually what happens is uh, that uh, um, sometimes uh, in uh, real situations, uh, you observe cooperation. Uh, people uh, typically observe cooperation. So, so how you reconcile it with this, uh, what I just told you? I mean, uh, say, um, um, so what I just told you is that uh, if you, uh, it's, it's just uh, 
formalizing uh, a particular uh, strategic interaction, okay? So if you formalize it this way, then this is the prediction, okay? With probability one, okay? If you instead uh, uh, observe uh, cooperation sometimes, uh, then uh, it might be that some of the assumptions that I made is not correct, okay? And uh, actually, uh, there are uh, many, many people who have studied uh, why do we observe so much cooperation in, uh, um, between agents, or even in, in biology, between uh, uh, individuals, okay? So we observe that, uh, say, uh, I mean, uh, biology is full of cooperation. There would not be life without cooperation, okay? So one interesting thing in, in this respect uh, is that, uh, say, say you, you could think about uh, the following. So a different way of arguing about uh, this prob problem, okay? You would say, uh, well, uh, agent one thinks, uh, uh, well, after all, two is in my same situation, okay? So it's going to behave the same. And uh, so actually we can only choose between this and this, okay? Now, um, uh, this is really uh, thinking uh, that uh, uh, essentially reducing uh, the, the independent choice of one and two to a single choice, okay, to a, to a, to a, a choice by both of them, okay. And this actually sometimes happens. So, for example, uh, there is one particular uh, case where uh, you observe uh, cooperation that is between uh, uh, um, relatives. So, why is it that uh, in biology, uh, say, uh, individuals spend so much time and so much energy in, uh, in caring about uh, offsprings? Okay. Because essentially, offsprings uh, carry your own genes. And so, uh, if you think that who is making the decision is not you, but the genes, I mean, those who are playing the game is not uh, uh, individuals, but the genes, and this is actually the, the right way of, and I think you, you, you will get to this point uh, in the course of this week. Then, uh, um, and, uh, and then uh, you say, you can think that, uh, uh, between two individuals, sometimes, uh, if you think uh, that there is a chance that uh, uh, your offspring are uh, carrying, uh, or another individual is carrying your same genes, uh, then you better cooperate because this is what uh, will carry forward your genes. Okay? And uh, indeed, there is this uh, uh, Hamilton uh, rule, I mean, this. this uh, Keen selection uh, thing and this Hamilton rule st says precisely this: that uh, if you think that is a probability that uh, um, uh, that essentially uh, player two is carrying your own genes that, than one, then uh, with this probability you should uh, cooperate. Okay, and so you should expect cooperation if the probability of uh, uh, being uh, uh, having the same genes is, is large enough, okay? So, but I think you will see this at some point. You had a question? It's okay. Yeah. If we collect the data in population and see these kind of decisions, uh, do we really see in experimental population that uh, people in prisoner's dilemma they choose the defect to defect strategy. I mean, defect defect strategy. Uh, well, if you observe uh, the defect defect strategy, then uh, you have an explanation. You have an understanding. Okay? Yeah. If you do not, uh, then you should think about uh, so, this way how you model your situation. Your your. I mean, so I'm in, turning around your question. So yeah. So it's like. Uh, has anybody get the data and seen what are the choices, like distribution of these choices among like the four choices? 
uh, do the do the prisoners always choose the it's on uh, particular systems you are looking at i mean so uh, and i'm not the most knowledgeable person but i think you are going to hear about that uh, in the course of the week so keep this question for more knowledgeable people okay thanks yes please uh as uh, as you have already told that uh, people are ready to bear cost only for their genes yeah yeah so i'm just asking if i take 100 sample these cases okay. where the two accused are father and son is cooperate is going to be the evolving strategy cooperate cooperate but the two accused are father and son suppose there are 100 different cases okay so uh, will they take take the risk to choose cooperate cooperate Okay, so uh, I'm not sure I understand the question, but uh, um, there is one uh, issue that uh, you were uh, pointing out is that how do I know that the guy that I'm uh, playing with uh, carries my same genes? Okay, in a population, I mean, how can I know? I mean, so, uh, and, and uh, this is where information becomes important, no? That, uh, say, if you, I mean, your uh, uh, relative. I mean, if you are related uh, uh, to another individual, then then you know that there is a chance that they have the same genes. And essentially, the fact uh, that genes are uh, the important thing when, when you think about is so. It's not about uh, um, a, a choice, but it's a, when you see these these uh, games uh, as um, uh, from the evolutionary perspective. What you think is that populations uh, that play these games, uh, which are programmed to play these games in the right way, they get a higher payoff, which is a higher fitness, so they uh, reproduce faster. Okay, and uh, so probably I didn't get. Uh, it, I don't know how this relates. Uh, to your... Actually, I'm saying suppose they know that they are father and son. Two accused okay. know each other. Yeah. The accused know they are father and son. My yeah. question is that accused know the relation even. If uh, this game is played in that scenario where the accused are father and son and 100 such cases are taken, I am just asking, can the majority of the results be cooperate, cooperate? Because you told that we can take the cost only where the gene is associated, no? Yes, no, so... Uh, yeah, uh... So what I was saying here is essentially uh, there is an assumption that is being made here is that uh, one and two are optimizing uh, uh, separately. Okay, that these are the the, the players, the, the the people who are playing the game. Okay, uh, when I was talking about uh, genes, uh, so then uh, you should uh, readapt this thing and think that uh, uh, who the, the real players are, are, are essentially not uh, individuals, but the different uh, uh, genes, okay? And so uh, if you make, uh, if you uh, rephrase this, this uh, uh, problem in this way, then uh, you see that, that you will observe cooperation, just because in that case, uh, it's, uh, it's just the choice between uh, this and this, okay? Because in, in that case, say the, the, the two choices, the two, the two people are the same people, okay? Okay, so. Okay, so. Very good, so uh, there are other cases, for example, uh, let me take, uh, uh, so this idea of uh, dominated uh, strategies and uh, essentially elimination of uh, dominated strategies. Uh, can I write here? Can you still see? Is a possible way of finding a solution of a game. So el elimination of uh, uh, dominated uh, Strategies. So, for example, uh, if you take a game uh, where uh, now you have uh, uh, two people playing, uh, one uh, can play two choices, left and right, uh, let's say, 
Another guy can play three choices that are called T, M, and uh, B. And the payoffs are uh, two, three, five, zero, uh, three, two, one, 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 zero, and then four, one. Then you can see that uh, <clears throat> uh, for uh, player one, this strategy here is giving payoffs which are always less than uh, uh, T. Okay, so that B is always less than T, no matter what uh, player two plays. So this one is less than two, this four is less than five. So that you can eliminate this, uh, this strategy. And uh, now you can look at uh, uh, player two and find out that, uh, um, so strategy R is always, gives you always uh, gives uh, two a less payoff a lower payoff than strategy l okay because zero is uh, less than three and one is less than two so you can eliminate this okay and now you see that uh, uh, player one either can get three or can get two so that uh, essentially you can eliminate also this and so you can predict that uh, they will play a l m and l uh, uh, by eliminating uh, uh, these uh, strategies, okay? But actually, uh, this uh, does not always work. I mean, so in some cases, uh, say, for example, uh, if you have uh, um, another uh, uh, game, uh, let me write it uh, properly, uh, say, for example, uh, another game uh, which is called... Uh, Battle of uh, sexes and uh, well, essentially, it's the story between uh, 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 a, a, a couple, and uh, she wants to go to the theater, and she wants to, uh, he wants to go to boxing uh, match. Okay, so if they go to the boxing match. He will uh, get a payoff of two. She will not be that happy, but uh, she is happy because uh, she, they will go together. If they go separately, they will all be uh, uh, not very happy. And uh, if they go to the theater, uh, then uh, he will not very, be very happy and uh, she will be very happy, okay? So in this case, you see that you cannot eliminate any strategy. There is no strategy that is dominated by other strategies, okay? So, so this, uh, uh, this thing works uh, in some cases, but it does not always work, okay? Yeah? Yes? B is less than T for player one. But what about B and M? So, uh, okay, so, uh, okay, you cannot say that uh, B is less than M, but uh, if a strategy is, is dominated by another strategy, then you will always uh, choose this with respect to this. You will never choose this, okay? And, um, and, and as a matter of fact, you see, B in this case is dominated by a strategy which will not be played in the end. Okay, but you don't care. I mean, just uh, it's it just something that uh, this strategy is a, is a strategy that uh, it's uh, uh, will never. You will never. You don't ex expect to observe ever. Okay. Okay. So. Um, Okay, so what uh, um, how are we doing with time? Huh? Yes, half an hour. Okay, okay so uh, what is a better uh, way to uh, solve this problem? So uh, a better way to solve this problem is to uh, look at the uh, best response. So a best response 
you can uh, uh, define the best response uh, of agent I to uh, what the other guys are playing as being uh, what maximizes uh, his payoff uh, um, uh, okay now let me write it this way what maximizes his payoff given that other guys are playing this so what maximizes now this is not mathematically very correct because uh, this uh, strictly speaking uh, is not uh, a a single element, but it's a subset of the choice uh, of the cho possible choices. Okay, so this is a what is called a correspondence, something which maps uh, uh, this uh, uh, strategy of the other guys to a subset of S. Okay, so this is a subset of the S I. Okay, but okay, in all the cases we are going to talk about this, this is going to be just a single element. So. Um, we don't need to, uh, we can, uh... okay, so, uh, so now, <clears throat> essentially, uh, this tells you, uh, this gives you the prediction of what will I play given what other people play. And essentially now you can see that, say, for example, uh, uh, say, <clears throat> The defect is the best response to cooperate, uh, both to cooperate and to defect uh, in the prisoner's dilemma. So, and uh, in this case, uh, uh, you can also work out what uh, the best response for, uh, say, the best response for L would be this, uh, and, um, and uh, the best response for uh, R instead uh, would be T. And, um, and you can do, uh, and you can do, uh, you can compute this uh, best response. Now, what we are interested in is the case where essentially, um, I mean, these points here, the points where essentially uh, player one is playing the best response to what player two is playing, and player two is playing the best response to what player one is playing. Okay, so essentially. The predicted behavior is, uh, if you want, uh, the fixed point uh, of these uh, best response strategies. Okay, and this is called uh, uh, the Nash equilibrium. Okay, so Nash equilibrium. Nash equilibrium is a is a say is a profile of strategies uh, such that uh, uh, SI star is the best response of uh, what other people are playing for all I. And or if you want uh, uh, that uh, the utility function of uh, uh, computed in SI, given what other people are playing, is uh, uh, what is given, so this SI star is what is given the highest possible payoff to agent I, given that other people are playing uh, uh, this SI star. Okay, so this is for all, uh, see, SI different than SI star and for all I. Okay? So this is a bit, uh, a bit heavy mathematics, but essentially it's, it's just uh, saying what I told you in words. Okay? Okay, so for example, if you look uh, at this game here, what you find is that uh, if player two is playing uh, B, then uh, uh, player one has to choose between zero and two, so this is his best strategy, his uh, best response. 
If, uh, uh, but if he's playing T, then uh, his best response is, is this one. Okay? Now, this is uh, the best response of, agent of player one. What about player two? If uh, player two is playing, uh, player one is playing B, the best response of these guys between minus one and one is this one. And if it is playing uh, uh, T, then the best response is this. So what you get is that there are two places where essentially uh, player one is best responding uh, to the best response uh, of player two, which is this and this, okay? So it's a situation where essentially uh, uh, what uh, uh, game theory predicts uh, is that uh, these uh, points uh, that we have called uh, Nash equilibria, this point is not unique. You have more than one uh, possible uh, outcome. And so the question is, uh, okay, so how, how are you going uh, to choose between this? Okay, so the idea of the, in this uh, uh, Nash equilibrium, the way you should uh, think about this, uh, even though uh, uh, we have argued uh, uh, about all these uh, thought process, but essentially what it, this is telling you is that these Nash equilibria are uh, particular ways in, in which people are playing uh, on which no one has incentives to deviate. So given what other people are playing, no one wishes uh, to change his way of behaving, okay? No one can get uh, more by changing uh, uh, behavior, okay? Okay, so um, I'll uh, skip the tragedy of the commons because probably that's not... Um, then give you a deadlock like uh, if there is no uh, nobody wants to budge then how do you uh, come to a conclusion yes okay so you are uh, pointing uh, uh, in the right direction and I mean to what I was just uh, going to say I mean there are situations where essentially uh, you have no um, solution so, uh, so, imagine this game where essentially uh, I take a penny and I, I put it, uh, say, head or tail on my hand, and you have to guess. So, if you guess right, if you guess right you're going to get uh, uh, the penny. Otherwise, you're going to give me a penny. Okay, so you can uh, formalize this uh, in, in the following uh, way: that uh, if I am uh, so, is head and tail. So um, if um, if the um, uh, if it is uh, so, if I this is me and this is you, okay. If uh, the uh, if I put uh, the thing on head and um, you guess head, then uh, I'm going to lose and you are going to win. Otherwise, I'm going to win and you are going to lose. And uh, uh, if otherwise, this is minus one, one, and uh, one minus one, okay? So this is a class of games uh, which is called uh, zero-sum games, because essentially whatever you gain, I lose, okay? Hmm? So this is, uh, sorry, my way of writing uh, once is probably, this is one, one, one min minus one, 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 and then one minus one. Is this clear? Or is more com So it is minus one, 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 huh? minus one, Uh, ah, yes, 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 you're right. So this should be minus one, one, yes. Minus one and one. Okay, yes, right. 
Okay, so now, uh, for example, uh, if you play uh, head, uh, then uh, my best response is tail. If you play tail, then my best response is head. If I play head, uh, your best response is head. If I play tail, then your best response is tail. Okay, so there is no, um, uh, no fixed point of this uh, best response. So what do we do? Okay, so um, actually, if you think about it, uh, the way people play these games, uh, say, I mean, this is the same thing of uh, say a penalty kick game. So is the penalty shooter, and then there is the goalkeeper. And uh, the penalty kicker can shoot left or right, and uh, the goalkeeper can go left or right. So, and what does the uh, 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 penalty shooter have to do? Is essentially to randomize. I mean, to behave in such a way that the goalkeeper cannot guess what whether he's shooting on one side or the other. Okay. Or what in this matching pen is, I have to uh, toss the coin in such a way that you have no idea of whether it will be head or, uh, or, or right. So, um, so this is interesting because essentially I have, there is an incentive of the players just to randomize, to play a, a random strategy, okay? And so, uh, essentially, uh, what uh, this tells you is that uh, it, uh, we should uh, generalize our uh, setting to the case where uh, agents uh, uh, or players can also play uh, random strategies. So you should introduce uh, uh, what are called uh, mixed strategies. So mixed strategies are, uh, uh, say, <clears throat> Are just uh, 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 probability distributions uh, over uh, uh, the set uh, S of uh, strategies uh, in SI. So this pi uh, i of S uh, should be thought as the probability that player i will play S. Okay. And so there are probabilities, uh, so they are normalized to one. So sum over S of pi i uh, should be equal to one, okay? And, um, okay, now uh, we can essentially generalize uh, our uh, notion of games uh, to uh, cases where uh, agents play mixed strategies, okay? So essentially, we are going to uh, define, uh, generalize uh, the utility function of agents uh, when they are playing uh, a mixed strategy against uh, opponents who are also playing uh, mixed strategies. And how do we do that? Well, essentially, uh, okay, so let's first uh, generalize this to the case where uh, the uh, agents are playing uh, against uh, uh, a strategy S minus I, we just say, well, this is the expected value on uh, pi I of the utility of I of S, uh, S minus I. Okay, so, or if you want, this is the sum over S in S I, pi I of S, U I of S, S minus I. Okay? So I'm just taking the expected utility over this distribution, okay? And then uh, you can further generalize to uh, the uh, payoff of, uh, um, of a mixed strategy against mixed strategies by just taking uh, the expected value over uh, all the mixed strategies of all your opponents of uh, your payoff uh, on the mixed strategies on the other guys, okay? Well, this thing uh, is drawn according to the okay? 
Okay, so let's now go back uh, uh, to this case and uh, assume that, uh, uh, let's say, pi 1 is equal to p and 1 minus p. So this is head and tail, and pi 2 is equal to uh, q and uh, 1 minus q, okay? Okay, so uh, <clears throat> now you can generalize also uh, the best response. You can think uh, uh, that now you can say, uh, you can uh, think about uh, uh, what is the best response uh, of to uh, a mixed strategy of my opponents, okay? And this will be, again, uh, the set of uh, a subset of all the strategies uh, that maximizes uh, uh, the utility, given that other guys are playing this mixed strategy, including all distribution over this set, okay? Because if you, um, if you have the, the, if your best response uh, contains both uh, strategy one and two, then also uh, a, a mixed strategy of strategy one and two will be a best response, okay? Okay, so then uh, let's see how this works uh, in this, uh, in this uh, uh, case here. And so I'm going to write, I'm going to assume that uh, um, agent two plays strategy uh, Q, and I'm going to compute uh, the best response. Uh, I'm going to compute uh, the best response uh, of one to Q. Okay. Now, uh, <clears throat> what is the best response? Uh, um, so, if uh, uh, what is the payoff of one uh, if he plays head and uh, the other guy play Q? Okay. So, if probability uh, Q, uh, I'm, I'm going to get uh, uh, minus one because Q is the probability of head, okay? I'm going to get minus Q. And with probability one minus Q, I'm going to get one. So plus one minus Q. So it's one minus two Q, okay? And what is the probability uh, of uh, uh, tail given Q? Well, it's, uh, um, uh, so it's, it's the opposite. So, so if uh, uh, the player two is playing uh, uh, head, then I'm getting Q, and uh, uh, otherwise I'm going to get uh, 1 minus Q. Okay, so it's uh, uh, 2 Q minus 1. I'm going to see that uh, uh, so uh, this is going to be larger than uh, U, T, Q, U1. So this is going to be the best thing if uh, uh, Q is less than 1. If Q is less than one half, so which means that if Q is less than one half, I should play. Uh, well, this is one half, and uh, now I'll avail of these uh, color chocks. Okay, so this is going to be my best strategy. So, uh, so sorry, my best strategy is to play uh, head which means, uh, um, sorry, which means uh, P equal to one, okay? So if Q is less than one half, my best strategy is to play uh, head, which is P equal to one. And uh, if Q is equal to, um, is larger than one half, then my best strategy is to play tail, which is uh, uh, this thing. Okay. And what happens if uh, Q is exactly one half? If Q is exactly one half, then uh, the two payoffs are equal. So whatever I play, including any mixture, any P, is going to be okay. So then 
all the points here are my best response. Okay? Now, <clears throat> what you can do is to uh, put uh, here, <clears throat> the <clears throat> do the same for player uh, two, and then uh, uh, put here P, and here the best response uh, of player two to P. Okay? And it's going to be the same argument, okay? So if, if, uh, if P is less than one half, then uh, my best response will be Q equal to one. If P uh, is, uh, um, sorry, uh, sorry, if P, no, it's going to be the other way around. So if P is less than uh, uh, one half, which means that tail is going to be uh, the best thing, then uh, um, I should play tail, okay? Which means, uh, um, uh, yes, so if P is less than one half, Q should be equal to zero. Uh, so this is my best response. Q is equal to zero. If P is larger than one half, I should uh, instead uh, uh, play um, uh, head. And so this is my, the best response of agent two. And now you see that uh, uh, there is a point where these two best response meet, uh, which is this one, and this is the Nash equilibrium. Okay? There's another discomforting fact of game theory that this looks like a swastika, but what can you do? <laughs> yes. I don't know whether the orientation is the right one, but it's... okay. So um, okay. So uh, <clears throat> there is an important result which uh, was worth the Nobel Prize for uh, John Nash, which is uh, Nash theorem. Is that uh, any finite game, uh, finite means uh, uh, finite n and finite number of strategy, number of strategies, okay, uh, has uh, at least one Nash equilibrium in mixed strategies. So whatever game, and this is essentially a fixed point theorem. Essentially, it's a, it's a, if you want to prove this theorem, essentially, um, uh, you have to think about constructing these best response uh, correspondences and looking for uh, uh, fixed points. Uh, and, um, and this theorem tells you that uh, uh, you will always find, or there will always be uh, a, a, a fixed point. Okay? So this is uh, quite uh, uh, encouraging. So sometimes uh, you have uh, more than one. Uh, uh, so for example, if you go back here, and this uh, uh, you are encouraged to do it as an exercise, you will see that uh, uh, if you build uh, uh, the same uh, um, construction I did uh, on, say, um, on the best responses, then what you will find is, uh, is that essentially there is also a mixed strategy equilibrium here, where essentially uh, player one will play this strategy with probability two thirds, uh, and this one with probability one third. Player two will play this with probability two thirds, and this with probability one third. And uh, so, uh, and you find this by doing the same construction, do it as uh, an exercise. Okay, so there is a last, uh, uh, oh, uh, there is one important uh, observation to make here is that uh, you see, when, uh, uh, 
when you are in a Nash equilibrium, um, also, so when uh, um, <clears throat> uh, when you are in Nash equilibrium, so when when your opponent is playing uh, 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 a mixed strategy in a Nash equilibrium, you are indifferent. Uh, between whatever you play, between all the strategies which are in the support, uh, which, which have non-zero probability, okay? This is something that you can uh, prove quite generally, just because essentially, uh, if you write down uh, the, say, if you look at uh, the conditions uh, for finding a Nash equilibrium, is you have to maximize over uh, um, the problem, uh, the, uh, the problem, uh, of agent i is just to maximize this this function here on all the strategies uh, uh, on all the functions that are uh, positive and uh, that are normalized. So when you uh, do this constrained optimization, what you find out is that all the strategies which are uh, um, so when, when you introduce this constraint as Lagrange multiplier in the maximization of this function, then uh, what you find is that all the strategies that uh, are played with a finite probability should have the same utility. Okay? This is just two-line calculation that you are also uh, advised to do. But essentially, when you play... Uh, uh, in this case, you see uh, the, the way in which the uh, penalty kicker is playing is just to make uh, the goalkeeper be indifferent between whatever he plays and vice versa. Okay. So the last thing I wanted to tell you is uh, it's about uh, um, the fact that you can use randomness uh, also to... Um, uh, to um, so to um, to solve problems of coordination. So imagine uh, this uh, case here. So this is a case where essentially, uh, if you plot uh, uh, the if you plot the payoff of agent 2 and the payoff of agent 1, then there are two points. One is uh, 2, uh, 1, 2. Uh, one is uh, uh, 2, 1. And there is another one uh, which is uh, essentially um, uh, 2 thirds, 2 thirds, uh, which is the mixed strategy. So the, these are the three possible Nash equilibria. Okay, so this should be a little bit closer to the origin. Okay. So these are the three pro possible Nash equilibria that you can achieve. Okay. And the question is, uh, how, do you, how do you choose between these three? How, how do uh, a, these two agents can coordinate uh, uh, between these two things? Okay. So, <clears throat> so the, the idea is that essentially uh, they can uh, uh, communicate. And, uh, and they can essentially agree on uh, uh, what to do, okay? Um, and this communication is uh, essentially, uh, if they communicate and uh, in the end uh, decide to go to this Nash equilibrium, then they, uh, both of them have incentives to uh, follow the agreement. Because if one does and the other does not, they will end up uh, in a bad state, which is this one, okay? So uh, these agreements are like uh, uh, self-enforcing agreements. And they, they essentially are, uh, and this communication that goes on between the parties to reach this agreement uh, has no payoff uh, cost, okay? So there's no... Um, it's what is called a cheap talk, okay? It's because it's essentially uh, something that, uh, uh, in order to enforce uh, uh, <clears throat> that after this, this talk, essentially what 
whatever conclusion you uh, draw is, uh, is essentially self-enforcing. Not only that, but essentially, if you think about this, uh, then uh, what you find out, say, for example, uh, uh, these two guys can agree on the following. So let's say, okay, uh, let's go to the theater if it rains, let's go to the boxing if it is sunny or if it doesn't rain, okay? And both of them would have uh, incentives uh, to stick to this plan, okay? And so what this means is that uh, if, they, uh, if the probability of uh, raining is one half, then uh, they can reach a point, uh, a payoff, which, are, which is essentially in the middle of these two. Okay? So in this way, you can think uh, there are uh, agreements that uh, essentially can allow them uh, to uh, achieve any payoff in this region. Okay? And each of them will have uh, incentives not to deviate from this agreement, okay? Now, what is interesting is that uh, uh, in uh, some situations, there are, um, and uh, I'll just leave, leave you this, uh, with this exercise. Uh, okay. uh, so, there is another game, which is... Uh, Old chicken game, where essentially <laughs> the, the game is uh, that uh, you, there is a narrow uh, a bridge, uh, two cars approaching, and you can either decide uh, to slow down and let the other guy pass, uh, or to go fast uh, so that you go there first, okay? So, and uh, you can either go slow or fast, slow or fast, if they both go slow, then uh, uh, but they pass. If you go fast, uh, uh, if you go fast and the other guy goes slow, then uh, the other guy has to wait and you uh, get better and the other way around. But if we go both, uh, both go fast, then uh, uh, it's a problem, okay? Now, uh, in this case, uh, you can find out uh, that there are, again, three Nash equilibrium. One is this, one is this. So, I mean, again, uh, the best response, if this guy is playing uh, slow, then it's uh, S. And uh, if this guy is playing fast, then you know, the best response of this guy is this. So, the best, so these two are Nash equilibria. And there is also a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, okay? So that uh, uh, the analogous plot there is one where there is uh, uh, 0, 3, 3, 0, and there is another point uh, which, is the, uh, which is essentially 1, 1, if you do the calculation. So uh, it's essentially here. So essentially, uh, there are binding agreements uh, that uh, there are agreements uh, that allow you to, for what I told you, to, to uh, achieve any point in this hull, okay? Now, <clears throat> here, actually, uh, you can find out that, that there is an agreement that allows you to uh, also achieve uh, 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 this type of payoffs, okay? And let me tell you how this works, okay? So imagine that uh, <clears throat> we, we decide, uh, uh, we sign an agreement where we say, okay, so there is a third party, which is just, uh, 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 say, let's, let's call it, um, um, say, an oracle, that uh, is, uh, uh, is um, producing a random variable that uh, has value, uh, say, um, A, B, or C. If it has, uh, <clears throat> we don't observe this, but essentially in this state, uh, uh, the oracle will tell to one to play uh, to play uh, S, and uh, to two to play S. And in this state, uh, the oracle will t uh, say to uh, uh, one to play F and to two to play S, and in this state, 
it will uh, tell uh, the, the converse, okay? So what the agents, uh, what the players know, is only what they are told, okay? And, uh, and these three things happen with the one third, one third, one third. So essentially, if this agreement, uh, um, so the issue is now, uh, given this agreement, is it convenient uh, for the agents uh, to follow what the Oracle is saying? And uh, you can do the calculation, you can do the math. And essentially you find out that since the Oracle is essentially mixing between this state, this state, and this state, uh, and this state is not achievable because it's up here, but it cannot be achieved, then uh, uh, the state that they can achieve is above this, uh, uh, this line. And, um, and essentially, um, you can do the calculation and see that this uh, type of uh, agreement uh, is a self-enforcing agreement, okay? So this type of equilibria are called uh, correlated equilibria because they entail the fact that agents do not behave independently. So in a mixed strategy, you play, play independently. You draw your strategy, your strategy independent of the others. In this case, you draw your strategies in a way that is on the others. Okay. So in, with correlated equilibria, you can uh, reach a better outcomes. And so one thing I would be interested in is whether there are examples of this in uh, biology. And uh, okay, so I think we are over, so yeah. Uh, sir, you defined the utility function at the very first. Utility, utility. So if this, all these games, uh, if I change the utility, for example, the preference order of the strategies are same. If I switch from one utility to other, but the preference order is same, will the physics like Nash and other will change or they will be remain same? No, no, it's, it's, it's all, uh, say, um, yes, so, so the, uh, these uh, different Nash equilibria are all defined in, with the same utility function, with the same preference set. It's not changed, I mean, the utility function is just this table. Or I didn't understand the question, so... Okay, preference order is same. Suppose yeah. I am going from ordinal utility to cardinal utility. So the preference order will not change there. Yes. So I am asking, if the preference order does not change, will the Nash and other thing change or not? Uh, no. No, no. They will not. The Nash equilibrium is a function of the preference uh, of the utilities of, of the edges. So one issue is, uh, but essentially, uh, um, so the uh, so the utility encode preference relations, uh, but essentially themselves they do not have a meaning. Okay, in this case, uh, uh, but in, in, in game theory, they in a sense that if you do a monotonous transformation of utilities then uh, preference relations stay the same. But the prediction of game theory um, uh, may change if you have mixed strategies, yes. The ways in which you mix the strategy may change. 